Hi, this is Kevin Phillips and I am back after a long break. It's been a very busy year so unfortunately I've been tied up so I haven't had a chance to do a lot of tutorials. In this video I'm going to be demonstrating a process that I went through just recently to help out a bunch of students on a team project. Now the team project is set on an alien planet and a disused military uh, base and as such it's got a lot of these hard edged kind of mechanical looking buildings and objects and props. The problem is we've got three weeks remaining and there is a ton of texturing that still hasn't been done. Now obviously it's more important to get the animation out of the way but it'd be nice to get this thing to look visually kind of appealing at the same time. So I said rather than uh, everyone spend ages trying to paint you know, military textures up and putting grunge and dirt and filth on things I'd produce uh, some stock textures and to do that rather than me paint them I thought I'd get Lightwave to do all the hard work for me. Now Lightwave's got some really good procedural textures and it's very easy to set these things up with. It also has a really good uh, surface baking camera which is good for transferring all this procedural texture stuff back into image maps that we can take back into Photoshop. So here's a quick tutorial. Um, what I'm going to do is show you how I produced this particular surface on this object uh, all with basically nodes and no need for painting anything. So let's have a look. I'm going to start by going to the surface editor and I'm going to go to the simple ammo box material and click on edit nodes. Now the nodes look something like this. Okay, I've collapsed a lot of them to get the screen looking a bit tidier but let me delete this all and I'll show you how I built that from scratch. Okay, so here's my stock grey background uh, material. There's nothing really fancy going on here. Click Edit Nodes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by giving it a nice camo texture. Now, camouflage is pretty easy to do if you use Lightwave's Turbulence node. Now, it's just a fractal pattern. And if I give it two colours, in this case, with this nice kind of army green, and I'll give it the same color but maybe make it a little bit darker so it's kind of broken up pattern and I'm giving it some contrast just to sharpen it up so I'll say 99% and there is a nice camo just like that and I might knock down that color a little more so they're uh, fairly dark okay now I can make this a little bit more detailed by going maybe a small scale of 0.7 to break it up more Okay, if I want to make it softer, I can uh, knock down the number of frequencies just to simplify the pattern out. Let's plug that into color and take a quick peek. Okay, nice. That's exactly what I was looking for. Okay, so that's one thing. It's got my nice base color going. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to add some nice scratches. And you would have seen in that previous image, or that previous uh, texture, I should say, I had some nice scratch marks going along the edges of all this casing. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, for this we need a third party plugin. And this is a free plugin. In fact, if you're a Lightwave user, you've probably got this already because it is probably the best set of tools you can get for Lightwave. And it's like an essential set um, that you do need for anything to do with texturing, even compositing. So if you download it from here and you can probably pause this video to look at that address if you're not familiar or just uh, basically Google DP kit Lightwave you'll find it pretty quickly. I'm going to download that and once it's installed you'll find it in your node editor here under DP kit. Now in here I'm going to go to shaders and the reason I have DP kit uh, for this is it's got a really great edge shader and if we double click on that now let's plug the color in here so we can see what it does. It's basically tracing all of the edges on my object. Very nice. So we have a few settings in here. The one that we're interested in is a thing called width. If I double click, see width is set to 0 0.02. Let's make it 0 0.005 and just have another look. That's pretty good for about as thick as I'd like the line to go. Now obviously scratches don't look like clean lines. So I'm going to break this up by basically varying the width using something a bit more random. 
and random is always a good reason for fractals. And here I'm going to use a fractal called the multi-fractal. The reason I use this one is because I actually like the look of it. And if I plug it in, it looks like this really cool broken up corroded material. Okay, so I'm going to plug that color back in from the edge so we can see what happens. And I'm going to attach the alpha, which is basically where the pattern is, to my width. Now if I was to have a look, you notice it looks pretty crazy, it looks really messy. Where are my lines gone? Well, the lines are there, but they're actually really, really, really wide because the alpha value in here goes to 1.0. And if you recall in here, we're using an edge width oops, of 0.005. So we need to make this a lot tinier. And the easiest way is to scale this percentage by basically using under math. It's a scalar because it's a single value and a multiply. Now we plug this into here, into A, and that into width. And if we double click, we'll say let's multiply those values by 0 0.005. Like so. We go back and perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. This nice, scratchy looking result. Okay, so we've got our edges, we've got our base color. Let's just collapse these, fold them up so they're a bit easier to see. I'm going to combine these two together and to do that I'm just going to go into the tools and pick this thing called the mixer node. So we'll take the mixer. Now mixer is a great node for mixing two color inputs. In this case I have background color which is my camouflage. Okay, I have my scratches as my foreground color. And I'll plug it into here. Okay, it's still got that because of course the scratches, the foreground color is black and white. So all I have to do to apply them on top of that is if I double click on mixer, I've got a blending mode. In this case, screen will put the light colors on and make the dark colors basically non-existent. So it's basically like adding the light colors into the base. Simple as that. And we're done. Look at that. Very nice. Now, I want to add a bit of grunge and kind of break it up a little bit. At the moment, it's pretty clean. You know, it's a clean green. It's got some white lines on. So I'm going to vary the diffuse randomly. And to do that, I'm just going to use another fractal. In this case, just the turbulence will be fine. Plug the color into diffuse. Now, the reason I plug color into diffuse and not alpha, alpha goes from 0 to 100% based on the fractal position. And I like to use shades of gray so I can visually see the difference. So white is 100% and if I was to just, I'm just right clicking on these swatches and dragging them down in case you're kind of wondering how am I doing that. Knock it down to 200 which is roughly about 80%. And if I have a look, okay you don't see it's pretty subtle but it is varying the shading across the surface. Now I might make this pattern a little smaller, so I make it 500 mils for the pattern. And I can do a small scale of 0.7, which will break it up a little more. And frequency of 6 will make it quite a detailed pattern. Let's have a quick look. Can we see it? We can kind of see it in there. It's a little bit more kind of fuzzy. You can plug it into color if we want to see the result. Okay, there's a bit of a cloudy thing going on here. don't know if you see this on the video, but it is is there. And that's just enough to break up the perfect shading of the surface. So that's pretty good. Okay. Okay, so that's out. And we've done that. And we've done our scratched up lines. So I'm going to add a little bit more grunge. I want to put some grunge in the edges. Easiest way to do that is with an ambient occlusion shader. And if I went under DP Kit, Shaders, and Amp Occlusion. Now I want to keep this one. But I also want to just darken the edges and I'll plug it in so you can see the result like that. Okay, a little bit too dark for my taste, but that's all right. So all I have to do is take these two and just multiply them together. So it just keeps that pattern and darkens it where those edges are. Now, we can do that with a math node. And again, these are scalars. So we'll go multiply. 
and plug in the color which gets converted to a, a scalar obviously shades of gray become a percentage and an occlusion we we'll multiply it and we'll plug that back in not bad not bad still too dark okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clamp this basically what clamp does and we'll find that under math scalar clamp is it lets us kind of clamp down the values of this occlusion so occlusion goes from black which is right in those little grooves and edges to white which is where there's nothing kind of blocking the edges of, or, or basically occluding things okay what clamp can do is say well rather than letting it go from black up to white which is what it kind of looks like here get very dark is I can say well the darkest shade uh, maybe it's 0.75 75 percent so anything that's below 75 percent isn't isn't even used it's just basically says 75 percent is the darkest it can become it's just clamped and we look at this and that's much better it's got a subtle amount of shading in here but it's not so harsh that it looks black and grungy okay so that's got a little bit of grunge in there a little bit of grunge going the last thing I'm going to do is I just want to add a little bit of dust okay, to the bottom. Now, this model is actually seated on the grid. Basically, it's a Y of 0, which is at the very bottom. So knowing the position of the, uh, the object is kind of important. So to add a bit of dust to the bottom, I'm going to use a gradient node. And when we open up the gradient node, we have input. We want to read just the y coordinate. So 0 is where it's on the bottom. And I'm going to give this a nice kind of a, well, let's give it a kind of a brown, dusty thing. Let's add a bit of uh, red into this one. Let me drop the saturation a little bit to wash it out so it's a bit whitish. And I am going to basically tell it to fade. Instead of going up to a meter, let's uh, put it up a key about there by clicking into the gradient and saying alpha of zero. Now this will fade out the gradient. Now where does it fade? Well it fades at the top of a background color. In this case it's black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug our nice texture in, okay, the one with the scratches on and the camo. I plug that into the background color. So what it should do now when we plug that into color is we get this result. So it's got this nice kind of dusty bottom and it fades as it goes up halfway. So that's okay, but it's not quite right. I'm going to double click on that. What I'm going to do is I am going to come in here and I am going to, um, let's see what I'm going to do. Maybe I'll knock this down a little bit further. Okay, maybe we'll make it, uh, let's say we can actually type it directly in here. This is basically the meters, so it's like 481 centimeters. Let's go 0.3. So 30 centimeters up. Okay, have a bit of dust around the bottom. Now it's quite even all the way around. Okay, I'm going to go in here and on this uh, key I've got to select. I'm going to click this option, show output. And what show output will do is it'll let us plug things in to drive that key, such as the color. Now, color can be a texture, can be anything. In this case, I'm going to use, I'm going to recycle my multifractal. And I plug its color into key to color. And there we have a nice broken up edge. Now, I might move that up a little because it's now broken. That's pretty cool. A little bit hard up here, so I might make this fade out a little more. Now, it does fade from here to here. Now, if you're familiar with a spline curve, uh, especially with keyframes in the 3D program, you know that uh, when there are two, it becomes fairly linear. But when you have a third one, it generates a kind of a curved line through it. So I'm going to add a key in here. I'm going to slide that down about halfway. And that just has a bit more of a kind of gradual fade up. And we do have that pattern still in there. It's a bit more broken up, which is nice. Okay, what I might do is I might just tone this back as well so that it's not so strong. Okay, 
and that just gives me a nice kind of patchy dusty pattern now the last thing I need to do now that I've finished my texture okay first thing you should do of course is go save so KP let's call us um, what's very crunchy ammo box has that for a long name okay just back that up I'm gonna go in I'm just going to say let's export that out as a texture map like in this case I'm going to bake it to a UV map that I can then take in a Photoshop we can add some more grunge brushes to it you know paint up some more detail put some like decals on there so to do that I'm going to go camera properties and I'm going to change my perspective camera to a surface baking camera now surface baking camera if you've never used it before basically lets you render across the surface of a UV map okay in this case I've got this object's got a UV map. I might make this just polygon normals because it has got no smoothing on it at all. And I'm going to give it a UV border of maybe about two pixels. And that just kind of bleeds out the pixels outside the edge of the UV map, which is kind of important. You don't want uh, kind of like missing pixels here to kind of cause little errors when you uh, see these on your textured objects later on. So we've got this bled out like that. I'm going to change my camera resolution. Well, I've already got it set to 1024 by 1024. You want it square. Okay, we can put some anti-aliasing just to soften that up. And then we just need to render that. Okay, now as we render, you'll notice, in fact, I might just kill that because you can see it in here, that there is some lighting going on. And when it's a texture map for color, for in this case, it's for color, I should say, you don't want lighting to be baked into the surface. Okay, so I'm going to go to my lights. I'm going to turn off that light. Now I want it to be flat, like flat lighting with no shading. Now ambient intensity or ambient light basically is like a booster for the dark areas. So instead of being completely black, say 5% light. And if we turn off the lights here, I make this 100%, it basically flattens out any lighting. So it's 100% bright, there is no shadows. Turn off the lighting so we don't get any kind of highlights. And then we can render and we'll get this nice clean color texture that we can then take back put into our other application so pretty easy pretty straightforward hopefully this gives you some ideas um, that you can use for your own textures and it does save a lot of time so especially with a project that the one we're in at the moment um, it has shaved a lot of time and we can use these as is without having to worry about painting them if we've got no time for them so cool stuff i'm back like i said um, hopefully i'll have a bit more time to do some more video tutorials but for now enjoy and i'll talk to you in the next video at some date soon